Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today we're talking about the distance formula and the midpoint formula. Then we're gonna talk about it on the number line as well as on the coordinate plane. So let's take a look. First of all, we have the distance formula and the midpoint formula on a number line. And on a number line should just feel pretty straightforward, like no tricks, no gimmicks. If I wanted to know the distance between two points on a number line, sometimes it's super obvious. Like the distance between three and 10 is obviously seven. But sometimes when it gets into negatives or decimals, it can get a little messier. So as long as we have a really basic formula to do, uh, to use rather, then we should be good to go. But before I actually show you this formula, I want you to think about distance. The distance between any two points, whether it's on a number line or a coordinate plane, is always positive. You can't have a negative distance. So if you ever get an answer like negative seven, you know something went wrong. If I said the distance between um, myself and someone else was five feet, even if I turn my back to them, it's not gonna be negative five feet, it would still be positive five feet. So our answers for distance should always, always be positive. So here, if I wanted to know the distance between point A and point B on a number line, I would simply be doing A minus B or B minus A, and I would need to make sure I took the absolute value of it because we know taking the absolute value of any um, problem always makes it positive. So the absolute value, if I got negative four, would be positive four and so on. Okay, so now the midpoint formula. The midpoint formula on a number line would be the value that's directly in between or halfway in between each of those numbers at the end. So here, you know, distance is all about what's the length from A to B, what's the value of that length, whereas the midpoint is supposed to be, okay, what number is smack dab here in the middle, so that way this distance and this distance are equal to each other. Well, midpoint formula on a number line is actually pretty simple. If you want to know the number in between, it's basically just taking the average of those two numbers. So you're doing A plus B divided by 2, or you could just think about it the other way around, B plus A. It does not matter what order you add them in, that's the commutative property, but you're really just taking the average. So, you know, when you're classically thinking of, hey, I got a 70 on one quiz and a 90 on another, what's the average between 70 and 90? Well, the midpoint is 80. Or you could do 70 plus 90 is 160, and then 160 divided by two also gets you that 180. So we're gonna take a look at some problems right now about finding the distance and the midpoint just move my face. Oh, I can't make myself any smaller, unfortunately. So I'm kind of in the way. So I guess I'll just sit there for right now. Okay, so here I have this number line and I have the points two and nine. So if I wanted to find the distance between two and nine, I think it's pretty obvious what it is, but it's simply me just doing the absolute value of two minus nine. That leaves me with the absolute value of negative seven, which is just seven. I could have done nine minus two as well and taken the absolute value of positive seven and got, I've gotten seven. If I wanted to find the midpoint between two and nine, I would add up two and nine, take the average of it, and I get 5.5. .5. And that should look pretty accurate because look, here's where 5.5 .5 is. And I think we can agree that it looks like that is directly in between those two points. Next one, I've got negative two and positive two. So the distance would be that I would take the absolute value of negative two minus two, which is the absolute value of negative four, which is four. But again, I think it's pretty obvious that it was four. Midpoint, I think we can probably easily see the midpoint, the number that's smack dab in the middle between negative two and two. But if I did negative two plus two divided by two, I get zero. Next one, this looks like I'm working with negative one and 1 1.5. So I need to do negative one minus 1.5, okay, so you're taking any number, subtracting it by the other, and then always taking the absolute value. So order doesn't matter, I could have flipped that around, it would have looked like 1.5 minus a negative one. And we get 2.5. Midpoint, I add them up, so I add up negative one and 1.5, divide by two, and we get a quarter, okay, or 0.25. This last one here, I've got negative 2.5 and positive 2.5. So when I go ahead and I do uh, D is equal to the absolute value of negative 2.5 minus 2.5, I get negative five, which is five. Midpoint, let's add them up 
and it's another one that we get zero for. Number line, super, super friendly, super simple. Okay, coordinate plane, we have to switch gears a little bit because it's nothing like the number line. So if I have two ordered pairs anywhere on my number line, they could be in these quadrants, they could be in any quadrants, it does not matter. But I would look at one of those ordered pairs and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna label it as my first ordered pair. And the way you would label it is you would call it X sub one, Y sub one. And then the second ordered pair, doesn't matter which one you choose to be the second, would be X sub two, Y sub two. So you've got this first ordered pair and the second ordered pair. And the distance formula looks like this. It's the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Now, this kind of looks like a really funky formula, and what is this even telling me to do? Well, let's take a closer look at it. What it's really telling us to do is subtract the x values from each other. So x sub two minus x sub one, and then square that result. Then it's saying subtract the y values from each other. So y sub two minus y sub one, and then square that result. And then after you square those two values, you're going to add them up, the plus sign, and then last step is to take the square root, and that's your result, okay? And we're gonna look at a bunch of problems. The midpoint formula on the coordinate plane is actually kind of similar to the midpoint formula for a number line. The midpoint is the average. So if I look at these two ordered pairs and I want to find the midpoint, okay, so if I was to connect, the distance formula is going to tell me the entire length of this line, but the midpoint is going to tell me, hey, what are the coordinates of this point that is smack dab in between them? And so what I'm actually doing is I'm going to take an average of the x's. So I add the x's, divide by 2, just like the midpoint formula for a number line. And then you add the y's and divide by 2. And your answer isn't some number. It's actually a coordinate point. So it's the average of the x's and the average of the y's. And that's your midpoint coordinate. Pretty interesting. So let's take a look at those types of problems now. So here you see I have a coordinate plane I've got A, B, and C, and I'm going to go ahead and label these ordered pairs with you. And then I've got some space where I did the distance formula to find the distance between each set of points, and I did the midpoint formula. So I'm going to do a couple of these steps with you first, and then I'm going to encourage you to pause your screen, try some of this out on your own, and then um, press play so that you can see what the reveal looks like. So first of all, the ordered pair for A is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're looking at four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So A is at four, six. B is at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So negative eight, comma, one, two, three, four. And my last one, C, is at one, two, three. So negative three. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 8. All right, so if I wanted to find the distance from A to B, so if I went ahead and I made this line from A to B and I wanted to find the distance of that measure, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this x, y, x, y. And you're going to see that I started out filling in my formula as this is my x sub 2 and this is my x sub 1. So x sub 2 minus x sub 1, so negative 8 minus 4 squared, plus, then the second part of the formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So it's going to look like 4 minus 6 squared. Whoops, sorry. Okay. So once you plug in x sub 2 minus x sub 1, y sub 2 minus y sub 1, and honestly, it's okay if you mix up the order. Like for this first one, if I did x sub 1 minus x sub 2, so if I did 4 minus negative 8, I promise you you're going to get the same result. Because take a look. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. So that becomes negative 12 squared. But what would happen if I did 4 minus negative 8? I'd get positive 12. And guess what? Positive 12 squared is going to give us the same answer as negative 12 squared. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And so I'd have negative 2 squared. Now, 
I still bring down my square root symbol. Negative 12 squared is 144. Negative 2 squared is 4. And so I end up getting the square root of 148. We have to know how to simplify our radicals. The biggest perfect square that goes into 148 is 4. So I would break it up into radical 4, radical 37, and that ends up giving me 2 radical 37. Now the midpoint. If I wanted to know the midpoint between A and B, I would take the average of the x values, so I would add the 4 plus the negative 8, so I look at my x values and I add those up divided by 2, and then I would add my y values and divide those by 2. 4 plus a negative 8 is negative 4, so this is really negative 4 over 2. 6 plus 4 is 10, so 10 over 2. That then gives me negative 2, 5. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot the point, negative 2, 5. And my drawing is pretty good because look how dead on that midpoint is. That is perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so I'm going to encourage you to pause the screen right now and try to find the distance of from B to C and then C to A and then also find your midpoints. And then press play when you're ready. Okay, go. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, B to C. So this would be negative 3 minus negative 8. And I'll draw the line. We're going from B to C right now. So negative 3 minus negative 8. And then negative 8 minus 4. Okay, so x minus the x squared plus the y minus the y squared. So negative 3 plus negative 8 really means negative 3 plus 8, which is 5. So that's 5 squared. Negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. So that's negative 12 squared. Then we would have the square root of 25 plus 144, which is 169, which is super easy. That's a perfect square. So it's 13. If I want to find the midpoint of BC, so let's see, I add up my x's, so negative 8 plus a negative 3 divided by 2. Then I add my y's and find the average of it, so it's 4 plus a negative 8. This then gives me negative 11 over 2, and then negative 4 over 2, which you can leave negative 11 over 2 because that's a simplified and proper, or you can put it in its decimal form. So it's negative 5.5 and then negative 2. And so if I was to go plot that point, negative 5.5, negative 2. Look how perfect that midpoint is. Excellent. Smack dab in the middle of B and C. Okay, our last one, C to A. So now if I go ahead and I go from C to A, so negative, I'm sorry, 4 minus negative 3 squared, and again, order doesn't matter. You can totally do negative 3 minus 4. It will be the same result. And then 6 minus that negative 8. 4 minus a negative 3 really means it's 4 plus 3, which is 7. 6 minus a negative 8 really means 6 plus 8, which is 14. 7 squared is 49. 14 squared is 196. We add them up, and we get that 245. Okay, so square root of 245. The midpoint between C and A all right, so I add up my x's, so negative 3 plus 4 divided by 2. I add up my y's, so negative 8 plus 6 divided by 2. And then I'm left with 1 half, and then negative 2 over 2, which you can leave as fraction, or you can put as one, uh, 0.5 and then negative 1. So that's how you do your distance formula and your midpoint formula on the coordinate plane. If I go ahead and I plot that point, 1 half, negative one, you can see how perfectly that midpoint is from A to C. Awesome. Okay, I've got a couple other quick skills that I need to go over with you. It says here, find the coordinates of the missing endpoint if C is the midpoint of A, B. So in this kind of problem, it's not as straightforward. Okay, so it says C is the midpoint of A, B. And we're told the coordinates of A, it's 5, 4. And obviously the sketch is not in this correct direction. And they actually tell you the midpoint is 6, 3. What we have to find out is B. Okay. And so what that really means is we have to figure out 
five, four, that ordered pair, and what other ordered pair will average out to give us this midpoint? So five plus some x coordinate divided by two, and then four plus some y coordinate divided by two should equal out to six, three. So then really the average of five and some number to give me six means that I'm doing five plus x divided by two equals six. Multiply both sides by two and then solve for x. So it's seven. So the b coordinate has an x value of seven, which should make sense because do you agree the average of five and seven would be six? It is. So then the other part of it is that 4 plus some number y divided by 2 should be 3. So that's my other equation. 4 plus y divided by 2 should be equal to that coordinate of 3 for my, my midpoint. Multiply both sides by 2, solve for y, and we end up getting a coordinate of 2. Which again should make sense because take a look at it. The average of 4 and 2 is 3. The average of 5 and 7 is that 6. So it works out pretty perfectly for us. Find the coordinate whose distance is 15 units from 5, 9, and negative 7, y. So find the coordinate whose distance is 15 units away from this unit, this point, and has this coordinate of negative 7, but we need to solve for y. So this is also a different type of problem because look at this. They're actually going to give us the distance of 15. They're telling us, you know, x... Um, x sub 2 minus x sub 1, so negative 7 minus 5 squared. But we have to figure out what should this y coordinate be so that the distance between these two points is actually equal to that 15. So let's see where this brings us. So we can simplify this part out. Negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. And we should remember from Algebra 1 that y minus 9 squared, that is a Binomial squared, which simply means you square the first term, y, you multiply these two terms together, y times negative 9, and then you double it to get your middle term, and then you square the last term. It's a perfect square trinomial. The other thing you can also do, remember, y minus 9 squared really means y minus 9 times y minus 9. And you can go ahead and distribute everything out, and your result will end up being this trinomial. So let's see where also this now brings us. So negative 12 squared is 144, and I've got this entire trinomial here. Well, it looks like I can clean up this 144 plus 81 and add that up and get 225. And now we've got a radical equation. We've got a radical completely isolated here on the right-hand side, set equal to a number. The way we undo the square root is to square both sides. And if we square both sides, we now have this. 225 is equal to y squared minus 18y plus 225. Well, it's a polynomial equation. Step one in solving a polynomial equation is to set the equation equal to zero. So if I subtract 225 on both sides, I'm just left with that zero. Step two for solving a polynomial equation is um, factor. We can see we can factor out a y from both of those terms here. So it's y times y minus 18. Step three in solving a polynomial equation, set each factor equal to zero and solve. So if I set y equal to zero, my answer is just zero. If I set y minus 18 equal to zero, I get 18. And so the coordinates, I actually have two options. It could be negative seven, zero, or negative seven, 18. Because remember the question was asking, what, what does the y value have to be so that the distance between these two points is exactly 15. So you've got some good factoring review in there. You've got some good multiplying polynomials review and solving a polynomial equation. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful for you. Thanks for watching.